Nobody Loves Me is the latest book from Maggie Hartley. This was released, I think, three days ago, and I devoured it over the course of two sittings. I truly love this. But what I will say is that I personally feel like it was very obvious what was going on. And that's not just to say that they planted things in the book to make it easier for us to work things out. I feel like social services should have really put the dots together much quicker than they did. But at the end of the day, these foster care memoirs are always based on truth. So I'm going to just say that in real life, the real story, they came to the right conclusion much quicker because what was really obvious to me, the professionals seemed completely oblivious to. But once they realised what was going on and my suspicions were confirmed, it was really, I was going to say a joy to read, and maybe that's too positive a word, but it was very gripping, very compelling, and we have a really likeable child at the centre of this, which always makes it a much more emotional journey. In this book, Maggie is looking after three children, uh, Melody and Poppy, who are sisters and live with their mother, and Bobby, who lives with his father, and they all live together. They're not quite step siblings the the parents aren't married or anything but certainly that's the family dynamic and what's quite interesting is that melody and poppy are very clean they're well dressed they seem to do quite well at school bobby the the younger of the child who i believe was eight years old is scruffy withdrawn thin shy reserved it seems like it doesn't make any sense how these children could come from the same household and honestly, once I learned the family dynamic, I think it was very clear what was going on. And it did baffle me that social services, according to the book, at no point made the assumption or even decided to explore what I thought was happening. But I don't want to explain what was happening just in case it wasn't obvious. I have to you know, bear in mind that I've read 50, 60, maybe more foster carer books. So by this point... I kind of, you know, there are similar stories, but social services have dealt with a lot more cases than that. So I feel like they should have been able to see the red flags much quicker than I was able to see them. So that was a bit of an oversight, I think. But as I said, these are always based on truth, but heavily modified to hide the identity of the individuals. So let's just hope that it didn't take them quite as long to connect the dots as it did in the book. But once we found out what was going on, it was really emotional. I really hoped that justice would happen for the right people. And I don't want to say too much more about what happens, but I was really emotionally invested in Bobby's journey. And obviously when he's spending time with Maggie, it was beautiful to see him coming out of his shell, opening up a bit more and generally starting to behave like a, a relatively happy, slightly hopeful child. And that's exactly what we want. Obviously, when a child's in the foster care system, we want them to start to come out of their shell a bit. So that was lovely to see, but it doesn't mean it's all plain sailing for Bobby from then on. What really annoyed me, not, not the fault of the book, absolutely not the fault of the book, actually very well written, is the character of Melody, who is a nasty little child. She's in year six, so she would have been maybe 11 years old. I can't remember if they gave her age in the book, but she is nasty. But it's, it's learned behaviour. And again, that was another thing that made everything really obvious to me. And I just thought there are so many red flags here that point to what's been going on. How can social services not see this? But I guess it is what it is. But she was, I hated her. I absolutely hated her. I know we shouldn't hate children, but she was a vile, vile creature. Again, is it her fault she's 11 years old and this is learned behavior? But at the same time, even as a child... You, you still know what's right and wrong. You know that he shouldn't treat people the way she was treating Bobby. And Poppy, her, I think Poppy was year five, so a year younger. Poppy wasn't as nasty. And they come from the same house. They have the same family dynamics. So it goes to show that actually it wasn't inevitable that Melody was going to treat Bobby that way. She made the choice to do that. And Poppy made the choice not to. So how much can we blame the source of that behaviour, it's it's a question that's up, to, up for debate. How much can Melody be responsible for her own actions at the age of about 11? I, well, I think very, very responsible. Um, not completely, of course, but yeah, the character annoyed me, but in a way that was very well written. 
and I really liked Bobby as a character. I really wanted the best for him. And I definitely found this to be, well, as I said, I read it in two sittings. Probably not quite 50-50. I think I read maybe 30% the first night. And then I, I, I couldn't put it down. I read the rest of it the, the following night and I, I loved it. Maggie Hartley's books never fail to entertain for the right reasons, provide emotional responses. And this one is no exception. Nobody Loves Me is definitely a book that I recommend. If you've never read anything from Maggie Hartley, you don't need to have read anything else. You can read this and you don't need any other information. But at the same time, I do recommend reading her books in order if you can. Because, uh, or at least in chronological order, because I feel like it's nice to get that journey. But I didn't the first time I read Maggie Hartley's books. I didn't read them chronologically. I've then gone back and done that, which has been a delightful experience. But either way, whether you choose to read uh, Nobody Loves Me first or after reading the rest, I, I think it's one that you'll really enjoy.